Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to do a rebuild on a Pen Clash 2 2000 size reel that's just a little cranky. Uh, it needs bearings. They're, they're kind of loud and the uh, owner had asked me to do the tune-up and exchange out the bearings if needed. Well, they need it and uh, there's a lot of them in this reel. But uh, we're going to show you how to take the reel apart, how to service it, how to do the bearing swap and uh, how to get this one back out there fishing again, giving it a second chance. Well, if you like these types of videos, if you like to see how reels are made, the variety of reels, uh, little, learn a little bit about the manufacturers and how they work and things like that, well, then I'm going to recommend that you subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting the video. And, well, you can uh, take a look at that and see if it's one of the ones that you want to watch. I work on all kinds of um, videos, uh, saltwater ones, freshwater, low profile, spinning, conventional. Basically you're looking over my shoulder in my shop as uh, I service the reels that are brought in for repair or maintenance. Well, you saw me take a couple of the exterior parts off. I started by removing the spool and you can tell right on the axle shaft here is one of those bearings. And uh, the rest of it, uh, well, we took the handle off, did that by re removing that in the opposite uh, direction from the way that the handle turns the reel. And now we're going to remove the three side plate screws to go inside to, to remove that axle shaft. So the Clash is a nice series of reels, uh, kind of upper end for the day. Uh, you had the um, the lower end, which was the Pursuit, Fierce, and then the Battle, and then you got into the Clash. And um, well, nice, uh, nice overall design, lightweight reel, 2,000 size. It's appropriate for river, stream, boat, uh, casting from shoreline. Uh, target size fish, probably eight to ten pounds. Nice bassing reel, if you uh, if you're looking to do that. And uh, pen, as many folks know, uh, their specialty is more in the, the salt water arena. But they have been making these, I'll call them smaller format reels. And every now and then they dabble into low profile reels. Low profile reels are becoming uh, more popular now in shore fishing in salt water, so it makes sense that they're there. Okay, I think that that screw here is holding that bump guard on, so we're going to see if we can just remove the side plate case that way. We can. There's one of the bearings we're going to go replace. That's the bump guard. It's a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way. If you're uh, working on a reel and you're a little bit confused about uh, how it re goes in reassembly, well, that's a nice place to be, a nice backup plan to have in terms of going after the pictures to help you readjust again. Well, one of the bearings just came off that side plate, so we'll just match that up. Probably the easiest way to do it. That looks like the one, so I'm just going to go ahead and put those in there. And as I replace my bearings, I'm just going to put the old ones right back into the sleeve that we had so that uh, we know which ones have been replaced and which ones need to be replaced. When I take my pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray. That helps me keep track of where the pieces and parts are so that when it's time to reinstall, I can get to them. So a couple of things that you can view as either positives or negatives. One of the things that's going on with this reel is that there is no anti-reverse override on it. And that, uh, well, from time to time, that becomes problematic because if you are working on a reel and it winds up uh, into a kind of a jam situation, there's no way to back out of it. Right now I'm trying to get the Trying to check it out to see if I can get that main gear out because, well, I got to get to this little cross line block here. There's a screw in it and it's kind of tight. So 
I'm not sure if we can pull it out without removing the axle shaft or not. There we go, we can. Well, at least we can move it up. I think the bearing's stuck on it. So one of the lessons right away here is be patient as you work on the reels. Don't try to force anything. If you force something, well, you may pay the price down the road. You may break a piece or a part. So just kind of take your time. Try and uh, work through the issue. If you don't have an idea of how the reel comes together or comes apart, then what I recommend doing is to go into a online site. Mystic Parts is a good one for pen pieces. And uh, get the schematic for the reel. That way it'll tell you what you got going. It'll give you an exploded view of what it is that you're working on. And it'll give you the opportunity to check to uh, make sure that the uh, plan that you have is the right plan for rebuilding the reel. Okay, well I've pulled the screw. I should be able to get this axle shaft out now. I did. I just pulled it. You can see there's a lot of old dirt and grease in here. It's almost burnished, right? It's uh, got a black coloration, but it wasn't black to begin with. And uh, while I'm at it, I've got the axle shaft. There's a couple of spool shim washers on that. These can get removed by pulling up and out. These control the height of the line lay on the spool. We've got the bearing next. And we'll size that one up. That'll be with this one. So we'll just go ahead and put that one back on. We'll put those shims right back on now. And then we'll set this aside. So we got a couple of the bearings replaced already. We'll have another side plate bearing and then we'll have the bearings that go on the shaft. And when you're doing your servicing and repair of a fishing reel, the um, key points generally are that you want to take the reel apart, you want to inspect the parts to make sure they're okay. Next up you want to do a good cleaning on the reel. Look at all the old greases that are in here. So I'd say that's been some time since this reel has been serviced. This one has a an assist shaft on that cross wind block. Take a picture so you know the orientation. I'm going to pull that rod down and out. That'll release the cross wind block. We'll clean those off right now. I'm going to use a paper towel. Notice as you do this that one side of that rod has a smaller diameter than the other. That's the top side. Go ahead and grab that cross wind block. You got a lot of old dirt and grease there. Now I noticed as I was doing this that the cross wind block is in a U shape and that the U shape faces up. But again if you had a question and this is a common place where, where folks will uh, do the wrong thing. If you have a question just go back to the picture. Let's see now what's next. We should just be able to pull this one off or maybe it's got a it's got a um, screw holding it on. That's why you want to clean because if I didn't wipe that off and tried pulling that cross wind block off, well, that could be some chaos. I use a parts tray. The parts tray I have is a fast food container and uh, well, I use the corners of those to segregate out the, the various seg sections of the reel. I'm going to pull that little gear off as well. That's the one that's going to drive it. And with those off, we should be able to push through the other bearing. Let's go ahead and size that one up. That appears to be the answer there. So let's go reinstall that bearing after we clean the case. There's a lot of dirt on here. It's the old grease. We saw the old grease has gone to the back of the main gear. And it's kind of nested in these little hollows here. When you uh, do this, note that there is a plastic bushing on the inside of that cross wind gear. Uh, don't, don't go about uh, losing that. Your cross wind gear won't work. We're going to press the new bearing back in. And now we're going to go up top after we take that bearing, place that into our bag that's holding the old ones. 
Again, you don't want to confuse them. So this is a good way to do that. There's a little mount here. It's got three screws on it that are holding on the attachment for the cover that holds the rotor on. There's a nut underneath. And this little cover is holding that nut from turning with the uh, force of the wind of the wheel. Let's grab those three. Grab the cover. I'm going to turn that over. Sometimes that little red washer stays on the cap. Sometimes it stays on the nut. Not a problem. Just recognize that it kind of belongs there. And I'm, now they use a big, big old nut here for this. So I'm going to use a ratchet. And once I break the hold on it, I'm going to just pull it off by hand. Notice the flat side and kind of a very ridge side. We pull up. Now we have yet another assembly here that's holding your pinion gear in place. Three more screws. When I take the screws out, I like to make sure that the screws are all the same size so that you don't have an issue with the putting a long screw into a shorter hole or vice versa. I've seen too many reels where folks have not, not paid attention and the longer screw interfered with something internal or the shorter screw failed to hold a piece and it kind of sprang free. So what I like to do with these is take them out and lay them on my desk to assure myself that they're all the same size these are. If they weren't, I would mark the spot where the uh, longer or the shorter one went. I'm going to pull that cap off. That cap has got a bearing in it. And that's interesting. The bearing that they supplied is not the right bearing here. Hmm. All right. I have a bearing for that. Now we should be able to remove the pinion gear. And if you have trouble removing the pinion gear, do a couple of things. First thing up, go ahead and put a little bit of a wetting down with your penetrating oil. Pretty sure this was on upside down because of the ring. And then use this as a, a handle or a knob to pull up and out on the reel. That'll free up your pinion gear. And here is our stack. So we have a carrier, we have the collar for your anti-reverse, that one's also on pretty good. And there we go. And we have a bearing in the back, so that bearing in the back is likely to be this one. It is. And we can take that one and put that in here. What we want to do with our pinion gear now is to clean that up. It's already got a little bit of that, uh, penetrating oil on there, so I'm just going to take a, a bristle brush. This one happens to be a soft brush, maybe a brass brush or the like. Pull it through all of the channels to make sure they're nice and clean. And then when you do that, go ahead and get your, your grease. I'm using pen precision real grease here, but please use fishing real grease when you do this. Get it onto the threads and onto the little stud that's going to sit in the, the rider. Next up then is that replacement. And we can put the collar on. 
and we can take our anti-reverse. Notice on your anti-reverse here that there's a white plastic side and a metal side. The metal side goes up. If you swap it around the other way, you're going to be in trouble because you will only turn in the wrong direction. Let's make sure we just clean out the rest of that case. There's just a little bit of dirt in here. Go ahead with the reassembly. I got to turn the camera off for a moment. I got to see if I can match up that bearing that uh, we did remove that didn't come with the package. Okay, I was fortunate that I did have a replacement bearing for that and uh, we're good to go with that. Let's take our assembly then after we've cleaned the case. Let's go put the assembly back in. Make sure that you're in the stud here. You wouldn't be able to get that in if you didn't have the pieces aligned properly. So we're good with that. Now we have this little uh, O-ring assembly here. And our top. We want to get those three screws that belong to this. Make sure we get those in. While I'm doing this, I want to encourage you to ask questions. If you have a question about this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and it's you're stuck or whatever, just uh, leave the questions in my uh, comment section for this reel. I'll try and answer those as best I can. Sometimes it's as simple as where do I get parts for a reel? Sometimes it's do you have a part? I'm not a part supplier, so sometimes I may have a donor reel, but not often. And uh, I'll try and guide you. All right, two of these. So we've basically done the bearing swaps. We want to continue to rebuild the reel at this point. And it's basically the reverse sequence of the way that we took these out. Then would be the rotor. The rotor nut is the big one. Swap your drive. You want to tighten now. Give it a spin. It spins nicely when everything it should be doing and uh, we'll go on to continue to build rebuild the reel next up then is to go to your part tray get that little tie down for the, the nut center that up and then let's go ahead and put the three screws that hold that in So we should have a much smoother operating reel, a little bit less noisy. And uh, once we clean up that main gear, which is sitting to my right there, and uh, we lube, this one should be a nice performer again. Okay, that's up. Next up then, let's go about reassembling the balance of the reel. We started kind of reverse order again. We have a little transition gear here. It's going to take the power from the back of the main gear and drive the uh, oscillation gear and we'll go for the oscillation gear just want to clean up there's a little bit of dirt in the back there clean it up reapply remember you have a plastic bushing on the center over the stud there. If it's not there, this won't seat properly. Just 
set that in. And get the large flathead screw from your parts tray. Make sure that ties down easily. Here, but before we do that, we want to take the oscillation block, cross block, center that over your stud, and we have that post. This one with the shorter diameter goes up top, as we noted earlier. Bring that in and seat it into the case. for the rod is right there. Make sure you're flat on the bottom. That's how you know you're in. Just like that. You should be flush now. Flat on the bottom. We have our main gear now. we got a lot of dirty old piece on the back of that, so we'll clean that up. That probably was blue grease at one point, but it's taken on a lot of dirt, and that's probably what the cause of some of the noise is in this. I use a cotton swab to clean out as much as I can, and I'm going to use that paper towel, which is probably overused at this point. Do the same thing here that you did with your pinning gear. Just run a hard brush through there to pull out any dirt. Checking your teeth while you're doing this, make sure that they're all nice and uniform and clean. And then once you've done that, go ahead and reapply new grease to the teeth, to the teeth on the back that are going to drive that oscillation gear. You can install that next. Remember, we had a little bit of an issue here. Just getting that screw in. So we just want to walk that in enough that we can work on getting the axle shaft down and in and that screw attached before we close up that main gear. It's inserted through the top. And then line that up so that the holes align. Then bring that down as much as you can. I just noticed that the, the rod came out when I turned that over. Just reset that. And with that reset, go ahead and I just started this before I started the camera. We we'll go ahead and tighten down the screw on the cross line block and then finish by installing the main gear all the way. You can give it a spin at this point, make sure everything's working the way it should, which it is. And now we can close up the back end of the reel here. We have the bump guard. And again, the, the piece that's holding this on there's a little tag on this side, a little tag on the other side, and the screw hole in the center. So just make sure that they line up before you put your side plate housing back on. And I'm just noticing here that that bump guard sort of kind of goes in after. So let's get that started. Now we should be able to do it this way. Make sure they're seated in all the, the right spots. There we go. And I guess since we took that one out, we know that the three side plate screws are all the same. 
and put that in. I'm going to put the one that holds the bump cord on first. We've got two more. They go on the top on each side. One more. We'll finish that up and then we'll go up top. We'll service this spool. I want to take care of the drag washers. We'll give it a final test. We'll see how we did. So that secondary gear should take the strain off the oscillation gear. I just got a pen battle in. The fellow was telling me that uh, had an issue with the battle with the um, spool, and I looked at it, and it's a broken oscillation gear. That's kind of unusual, but it happens. It either happens because of metal fatigue, or sometimes it happens because, well, it was the the least resistant of force. Generally, when somebody is jamming up a uh, a rock or a snag or something, try to power out of it, something's going to break. In that case, what probably broke was the oscillation gear or the cross wind block. All right, these are HT100 drag washers. They got four points on them. They act as eared washers. You can run these dry or you can run these with the um, a little bit of grease. These seem to have a little bit of grease on them, which is okay. Doesn't have a lot of drag in this one. That makes sense. It's a smaller reel. So we have two of the drag washers. We have a keyed washer below and a keyed washer on top. Held in place by that little uh, five-sided clip. Clean those off, get the dirt out of the way. Reinstall the clip. There's a groove that the clip rides in. Find the groove and then set it in. That's a retaining clip. And uh, if you don't have it and you take your spool off, the dry washers could move out. All right, let's put these back in. Put the handle on, give it that final test. So this is the Clash version 2, 2,000 size reel. You've seen how it's made. Nice reel. Lots of ball bearings, of course. And uh, we'll see how we're doing here. Time for the final test. I just went to test it before. and Notice I didn't put the, uh, the little cover on the opposite side plate. Well, here you go then. A nice, smooth operating Clash 2000, the Series 2 of the Clash. It's ready to go fishing again. So with that, there's one more bearing in here that I didn't replace yet. I will do that. And I'm going to just a little bit of oil onto the seams of the bale to make sure that that works easily, which it does. Okay, well I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, again, please like it and please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting videos. And uh, well, you might just find one that you want to see. And if you do, you'll enjoy viewing it, watching the step-by-step -step processes to help you uh, keep your reels running for a long time to come. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.